more challenging things on assembling the black pearl is the instructions don't really follow any specific pattern from the beginning to the end. So some things you just have to keep searching for. One was the ladder that goes from the lowest deck up to the middle deck. This is the area that needs a ladder. I found the part with the steps, but the, the side uh, rails I could not find until later in the instructions. And they are in packet E, and this is where I had marked everything individually. So I now have that so I can build this ladder. The current ladder I'm making is from parts out of, it's E5, and the steps are 23-1-A. And so these will just attach together and I'll work on making this. One more thing to be aware of, there are three different size steps for ladders and stairs. For the ladder, it is um, part number 23-1A, but I mixed them up, so learn from my mistakes. So I'm just going to take the smallest one and make the ladder, and you can see I taped it in place so I can add six or seven of the steps. So keep in mind to keep those in their right places before you get started. Don't join them together like I did. According to the instructions, this ladder should have six to seven steps. I put in five. Once those dry, I'll put one at the bottom and one at the top. Next, I thought I was ready to go to the upper deck, but on placard J, there are a lot of these little supports that go right under here. And so I need to put all of those in place. So I'll get those mounted in there and continue the build. Another important note on these J pieces that are these supports, I thought they were all exactly the same so I mixed them up and there are slight differences and you can see I have a little gap there at the top of that one and I think that's because I did not stay in order so make sure you keep them in order starting with 11 and it goes up to 20 but I think number 11 and number 20 you don't actually put in place it says to leave them out so I now have those in place the upper deck pieces you uh, you do planking this is the real thin it was kind of a rust colored in some cases it's um, black walnut I don't think what they sent was black walnut but this worked well this is all I have left, so there's not a lot of spare. I'm very happy with how, how it turned out. Glued it on. I still have some trimming to do. And then what I've decided is to, I'm going to sand these off and then do another coat of stain. So this is one that I did that to. I decided to go ahead and put the decking on before I put these on the ship itself. So, I'm going to sand these, just lightly sand them, very, very fine sandpaper to get rid of a little bit of, there's a little bit of glue residue here and there, so. I also stained the wood prior to gluing it on so that I wouldn't have a problem with the glue stopping the stain from penetrating. Okay, I've sanded these two pieces. This is the piece I already sanded and then restained. Again, I'm using a mahogany stain. Very happy with the coloration on that, so these will turn out similar to that. The larger piece I'm still waiting to dry to trim it before I start sanding. So I'll show you the completed grouping as I put it on the ship. I'm now in the process of gluing together uh, the parts on sheets L and LC and they're identical parts. They glue together to make them thicker. I've also determined that both sheets have a number pre-engraved on them but when you glue them together one side will not have a number the other will and they're also different thicknesses 
So I'm determining that the LC is a little thinner and it holds the stain a little better. So that's one that I'm going to have facing uh, with no number on it. And that way you can identify them. There, you, I think you can see the number four on that one. So I'll put the glue on that. It's the thinner piece. And then the other one will go on top and its number will be visible. Then when you place it on the ship, you can place the number facing outward because you'll plank over that. The other error I made is I put the second deck on and those pieces go in here and I'm going to have a heck of a time being able to reach around and get them in position. So make sure you put L and LC together, install it on the ship between the bones here, then work towards your second deck. Starting at the front of the ship, these are the L and LC parts. You can go ahead and glue them together. They match up exactly. Put the numbered piece on the outside and then the numbered piece on the inside does not show. It's where it's glued together. And it's 7 all the way through, I believe, 16. So they just go numerically. 7, 8, 9, and so on. And the last one Again, you can see them from out here, is number 17. And actually, I think you can see that on camera. So there's the one seven. So I was able to figure out the positioning. You notice that the openings are mostly close to the back of the ship, the back support. On the open side, now we're working from the back of the ship going forward. This is LC1, L and LC2. So just remember L and LC are glued together. So you've got, I'll just refer to them as L1 now that they're joined. L1, L2, then this will be your open viewing area. And then you come down to L3, L4, L5, and L6. And that completes those series. I was able to get them underneath the, the deck or between the two decks. I put them as flush as I could to these ribs, but there are gaps. You can either try and sand that so you get the angle right. I'm going to fill the gaps with wood putty because this area will be covered with planking. So I'll fill it with wood putty, come back, sand it. I finished putting the initial coat of filler and I'll lightly sand that down and get ready to do some planking, although I'm not really at the planking stage yet, but I do have those pieces in place now. This is the front of the ship and this will be the closed side that's all planked before I put any more of the decking on. I'm supposed to go ahead and put some of the layers out here, which are parts P1 and P2. This is P2. Uh, P1 was attached to it, but it had uh, looked like it needed separated, so I separated it, but I really did not need to. So let me uh, put these on. I was able to set both pieces on there. You can see how one and two, these were originally connected, and I snapped them apart, and now I'll have to glue them back together. So this will be soaked and then bend all the way around to the very front, right there. And then you can see the notch that it fit into there, back here. And then parts three and four are very similar. They are, they're attached also, but it looked like that it should be disconnected. I don't know why they didn't just make it in one piece. So you can see the little notch that you break off to separate them. Three will fit right there. That'll be three and four. And again, the windows and doors match up. So let me work on that, see if I can get that attached. And then I'm guessing then that planking will go on the outside of this. So this part under here is, is like three layers thick. I have one and two in place, but here's another reason my error in putting this uh, upper deck on is I 
couldn't clamp this part. Had I not put that deck on, I could have used clamps underneath. So I struggled a little bit there. So that's one and two. Three and four, this is an example, same as one and two was, where these little tabs, I don't need to separate because this really should just be one piece. Make sure you get these on before, I think, this deck. I wasn't following the instructions well enough, apparently. But I do have them in place. Not perfect. I'm hoping some of the edges I can sand. Obviously this cannot be the finished product. I had ordered some actually wine bottles to act as rum bottles, but they are way too large for the scale of the ship. So I've decided to make my own cabinet and my own rum bottles. So I will show you how I'm making those. They're turning out better than I thought. Um, they'll look better once they have some stain. So let me show you how I'm doing that. All I'm doing is taking a very small piece of dowel rod because this really is pretty tiny, the opening. And I don't know, that's probably an inch. You could do a little more than an inch. And then I'm kind of tightening in my drill, which will mess up the bottom, but all I need is the lip of the wine bottle. This has got a very sharp edge on it, and I'm going to try and make a cap. So what I'm doing is I'm making just a crease or a sharp edge or a line towards the top of the bottle where the cork would uh, begin. Or I guess I could say the, the lip of the bottle itself. Probably difficult to see on camera, but there is a slight crease there. Next I take the rat tail file, and now I'm just going to taper it back to where the bottle would be. Now you can probably see I'm starting to get the neck of the bottle. And that's all I need. I don't need the entire bottle because it's going to be hidden inside the rack. Now I can make the cork a little smaller. It's just a flat file. So I'll show you once I get them stained up and in place, but I wanted to show you how I made them. This is the completed rum cabinet, and the white strands you see on it are actually spider webs. I went out and kind of captured some spider webs. I'll pull it off just a little bit once I get it in place. So that'll be my abandoned rum cellar because when you're cursed and your thirst can't be quenched no one goes and drinks rum anymore after some further consideration I moved the rum cabinet to the lowest level towards the back of the ship I realized that was a more appropriate place for it to be resting. So I've moved it and I've glued it in place and I saved some cobwebs. So this will conclude part five of building the Black Pearl. Progress is being made, but so are some errors. If you're watching these videos and you decide to build a Black Pearl along with me, send me a comment and let me know. I check my comment section on a pretty regular basis. 
Also, if you've not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you would. New subscribers are always welcome. Thanks for watching.